Um, welcome. So last week I said that we were going to do trees. Hi, Valerie. Hi, Sandy. And we are going to do trees. Now, when I started, um, hi, Janet. When I started prepping for this, I was like, wow, we need to do more than one back to basics for trees. So, um, I have made this into a three to four part series for trees because there's so much about trees. And I was like, I just, I want to be able to show you guys the trees and not feel like I'm rushing you through or missing information because trees are actually a really big part of um, Art Impressions watercolor. I mean, we use them, you know, in foregrounds and backgrounds. We use them um, to have, um, to add interest to your painting. Hi, Tony, good to see you. And um, I feel like if I just did this in one back to basics, I would miss so much. So um, I am going to do, hi, Nicole. Are you awake? Good to see you. <laughs> hi, Janet. So um, it's going to be, uh, this week is going to be, I actually grabbed a different tree set. I know you guys, I'm sorry. I put it in the product list that we were using these two tree sets, but midway through, I'm like, I have got to, I have got to do the trees justice. And I feel like if I use those two in just one, it's going to be like an hour long, quick, you know, run through. And I feel like you guys need a little bit more, um, instruction when it comes to trees. So my plan is, is to do, I'm going to use the, um, covered bridge mini set which has um, these two trees in it. And I love this tree for beginners. Um, this one is really great to show you foreground, middle ground, and background. And um, yes, Debbie, I, I feel like a lot of people have, you know, kind of mentioned that they are having trouble with trees or, you know, they like their trees, but hi, Sheila, hello. Um, they like their trees, but they feel like just something isn't right. And so if I can take my time and go through um, some of these with you just at a slower pace, I feel like you'll really grasp um, how to do the trees and you'll feel really confident going in and using them, okay? So um, this week we're gonna use um, this set. Hi, Diane, hello, hello. Hi, Bridget. And um, I'm gonna use the Covered Bridge mini set and we're gonna do a, a lesson on foreground, middle ground, and background trees. And this is all the same tree. We're just using different, um, and actually this one has no filler, but these are two different stamps, um, filler stamps to kind of give the illusion that this is a foreground, this is a younger um, tree and then a middle ground, this is a more mature tree, and then the fork or the background tree, which is going to be really, really big, but you're not going to see a lot of the details in that background tree. Okay, so um, what do you guys think about this? Any instruction you provide is appreciated. Oh, Peggy, thank you. Great. And then we're also going to do the birch trees, since those also come in this set. So aren't these cute? I love the birch trees so much. So we're gonna do, um, we're gonna start here, okay, and then next week, and I'll remind you at the end, next week we're gonna do palm trees and fir trees. So we're gonna do palm trees and fir trees. I know a lot of you have questions about these two sets, how to do them, how to get, um, you know, the look that you're going for with the different, uh, the different options here, the little uh, branch options. So I'll show you how to do those next week. And then I'll also work with um, these fir trees as well. Okay, so are we cool with this? Um, I, I think that you'll be really happy in the long run to kind of stick with me and um, we'll work through the beautiful trees sets, okay? So, oh great. It looks like we are liking this idea. So that makes me very, very happy. And um, so I've wanted to learn how to do the birch trees. The birch trees are really fun. It is a technique that we use um, specifically for birch trees and it's really just you're coloring in the negative, which I'll show you, okay? Um, do we have any questions about 
the three to four part series. So um, just to get you excited, there's going to be a seasons tree lesson. So we're gonna do things like this, um, like the dogwood. So you're gonna get um, spring, summer, fall, and winter trees, okay? So um, I, I really wanna do a really fun, in-depth um, three to four part series on trees. Okay, all right, everyone. So I'm going to flip you all around and we are going to get started, okay? So hang with me just one moment and I will switch you around. Okay, so we are going to start with, and just, just so that I show you again, um, the items that I'm going to be using in this lesson is this uh, covered bridge mini set. And a lot of people have this one. If you don't have this one, you can simply um, switch out another tree and this will work just fine, okay? It's just that this one just seems to be a really great option for um, kind of learning that foreground, middle ground, and background. And um, I used to teach with this tree um, that technique and it worked out really well for students. So it was kind of the first one that I went for. So let me just pull that around. Okay. Hi, Kim. Good to see you. All right. And then I'm also going to use the foliage set one, the small grass and this vine right here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to use as well the little leaf from the watercolor large tree set. Now, if you don't have this one, you can easily use this from your foliage set, okay? So um, if you don't have the items that I'm using, simply grab, well, for the, for the one that's far away, for this one, you actually don't need a filler stamp in here, and I'll show you how to sort of fill this in um, just using some water and some color. And then this one, you want just a little bit more dense. Um, so you can see the difference between like the density in this and the density in this, which I'm gonna use for the close up because you're gonna see those leaves a lot easier when the tree is close as opposed to when the tree's further away, you're not gonna see as much detail in here. Okay, hi Pat. Hello, hello. Okay, and those are the sets that I'm gonna be using today. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with the um, this little guy. Okay, so this one's the one in the uh, Covered Bridge uh, mini set. That's 4808 if you're interested in this one. And it's this tree, it's just on its side. So it's this tree right here, okay? And I'm gonna grab this one, and let me just zoom in a little bit here because I know you guys like it a little bit closer. And, um, oh, was my sound bad? I wonder, okay. Um, it looks like it's back anyway, so that's good. Okay, so I am going to take number, um, we're gonna do the foreground tree first, and then we're going to work our way back um, into the background tree. So we're gonna do this one first, and then we'll set it a little bit further back for the midground, and then further back for the background. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna take number 177. Oh, Lorna sent stars, thank you. And I think actually, Sheila, you maybe sent some stars earlier too. Thank you so much. Okay, so I am going to ink the top of my tree with number 177 in the branches, just in the branches, okay? And I'm going to use 969 in the trunk just this bottom part of the trunk, I'm gonna use the 969, okay? And I'm gonna stamp this towards the bottom left, okay? And we're gonna start right there. Now I'm gonna take my brush. If I had not used this brush yet, I'm going to want to get it wet by opening up the bristles here and letting the air bubbles out. Can you see those little air bubbles floating to the surface? Okay. All right. So I'm just gonna let those out 
and I am going to just wipe off that excess water, especially from the metal part. So if you got any water on the metal part, um, you wanna wipe that off uh, right away because you don't want that to drip down onto your paper, okay? Um, oh, Velda, this will be, um, this will be uh, very useful. Thank you, Kendra. Oh, of course, my pleasure. Okay, so I've got my brush and I'm just going to come down just a little bit onto that trunk and then I'm gonna leave it just like that. All of this up here, I'm gonna touch with water after I put in my um, leaves. So I want something that's going to have a bigger leaf because this is closer towards you. So if you think of something that's really close to you as opposed to something that's maybe, you know, 100 feet away, you're gonna see a lot more detail when it's close, okay? When it's really close to you, you're gonna see quite a bit more detail. So you want a bigger, um, leaf stamp. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to use um, the vine and I'm going to use number 177, just inking the very tip, maybe the top third. So I'm just going to about here and that's all I want to use. I'm not going to ink this whole thing. Okay. All right, so I'm going to take my stamp and I'm just going to start stamping this in because this is a little seedling. It's small and um, it's just starting out its life. So if you think of um, all of these trees sort of the same tree, <laughs> just different maturity levels. So this is a really young seedling. This is a little bit more mature and that's really mature in the way background. So this is a big tree in the background, okay? So I'm gonna take that vine and I'm just going to stamp, just following the branch, okay? So I've stamped here, following the branch up, and I'm gonna stamp over here. Not every branch needs leaves, okay? So you don't have to do this to every branch. You can stamp just a couple of these in, some light, some dark. And I'll just do a couple more sort of down in here but you really do want to leave quite a bit of open space because that's what's giving you, um, <laughs> no, you're good, Velda, I got it. <laughs> no, you're totally fine. Um, I was like dry, I don't think she means dry. <laughs> okay, so when you leave space in here, you really, I'm gonna turn my paper a little bit just so this is straight. Sometimes you just stamp an image a little bit crooked, it's okay. Okay. Yes, Barbara. <laughs> yes. We get thicker and fuzzier as we age 100%. <laughs> okay. So if we leave this open, it's going to give you the sense that it's a very young tree. Okay. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to pull out some of these leaves. Okay. So for those of you who are just joining me and you're brand new, when I dip my brush, I just dip it in and I don't go past this metal uh, portion right here because I don't want any water to drip down, okay? So I'm gonna dip it once, wipe it off on the edge and just very lightly reshape it, taking off that excess water, okay? And you're fine, Deborah. Go, just go for it. See how it turns out, okay? So, and maybe you'll end up having more of a middle ground tree and that's perfectly fine. These trees are something to be practiced. So, um, you know, it's not likely that you're gonna get something you're super excited about the very first time you do this. And that's any technique, that's any project you do. You know, with practice, you become accustomed to how the product works and, and really how you want it to work. So you can maximize its potential, but you can't get there until you practice. Okay, so I'm just, very lightly, you can see I'm coming out of the edges a little bit, but I am leaving some white space in the center. All right, am I using number four? Barbara, yes, I am using number four. So I'll be using number four for this whole um, lesson, okay? So now I've got my palette out, which means I'm going to be adding um, extra color to this image, and I'm gonna use number 565. I'm gonna keep the palette really simple today. 
so that you can really think about um, the way in which you're stamping your trees without having to think so much about the color. Planning a day soon to have an AI stamping day with my sister, Kathy, fun. Um, Dorothy, that looks like a nice little stamp set. I just came in, which one is it please? Okay, so this one, Dorothy, is the, this one is the Covered Bridge mini set. And it's gonna be this tree and I'm also gonna show this tree, okay? Um, this tree I'm using right now, I am demonstrating how to do um, a foreground, middle ground, and background using that one tree, all right? And if you don't have that tree, you can use a different tree. Barbara, I do use number one, it's just not very often. Um, I usually use that on um, uh, projects with really tiny details, like the veggie cart. Um, things that have really, really, really tiny details that I want to kind of keep detailed, okay? So 565. So I've got 565, and I'm going to use this for my sky throughout the lesson. So I'm gonna take my brush, and I'm gonna take a little bit of that 565. This is such a nice color because it blends really well with the green. And I'm going to just kind of put in some of this sky kind of throughout here because you would be seeing through the, the leaves. You would see the sky, um, through the leaves because it's a young tree. Okay. So I'm going to keep going just some of this blue and I'm just moving this color around. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And I'm going to bring some up in here. But you're going to focus on getting it sort of in the little crevices of this tree. And then I'll also bring a little bit down underneath, but not a ton down here because this is a small tree. So if we keep our sky sort of up in here, it's going to dwarf the tree. It's going to make it look small. Okay. Now I'm going to take number 177 and just put a little background. So 177, and I'm just going to do a little background back here and give it just a little home. So I'm gonna take that 177 and just create this background. Now, if you angle this, and this is something actually more recent um, that I've learned from my amazingly gifted mother, is if you angle things a little bit, you're going to find that it's more interesting to look at. I used to do a lot of straight across and it's absolutely fine to do straight across, but if you angle the landscape just a little bit, it becomes more interesting and a little bit more realistic because if you look outside, the ground is generally not gonna be even unless you have like a pristine flat, flat yard. Um, we live in the Willamette Valley and so we have a lot of rolling hills and a lot of uneven ground. And um, I just think um, it looks really, really good when you angle it and she's totally right. If we have time, can you put apples and oranges on our tree? You can, absolutely. <laughs> put apples and oranges on your tree. I think that's a great idea. And if you're going to do it, do it on the closer tree so that you can see it because if you're going to do it on the further away trees you wouldn't actually see apples and oranges because it would just be so small you would have to do little washes of color to um sort of you know uh have a um an idea that there is fruit on the tree but you wouldn't actually see it from that far away so if you're going to do that um, do that in this tree right here, okay? So you're gonna do that with the close-up tree. All right, now I'm going to take my grass and I'm gonna use number 177. I'm gonna take that grass and I'm just going to angle this down a little bit. Yes, it does, Debbie. It's so beautiful here. It's so lush and green. 
Um, hi, hi, Dawn. Hello, do you use the smooth side or the textured side of the paper? You know what? I used to teach that um, you should use the textured side of the paper, but I've sort of come to love the smooth side as well. So, um, you know, it really depends on the look that you're going for. If you want something that's a little bit more um, less detailed, um, I would go with the textured side. It's going to look a little bit more washed out, a little bit more abstract. If you want to keep the detail more, then I would stick with the smooth side. Okay, so you can see I sort of angled that a little bit, and it just gives it an illusion that it's sort of sitting on just this little uneven ground area, and I can come back in here and just soften um, some of these leaves a little bit more just with a little bit of a damp brush. Don't get too much water or you'll feel like um, your color's sort of running away from you. Okay, hi Karen. Good to see you girl. And Jane, I think you asked me a question up here that I missed. Can you tell me again what leaves you're using? Yes, so I am using from the foliage set one, the, um, the close up tree is gonna be this vine right here okay that's the one i'm using but i'm only using this top third okay hi lee good to see you it's totally fine you just join when you can it's no big deal um terry it's good to know about the two sides of paper absolutely you know what don't limit yourself to needing to use one side of the paper um, use both sides and just kind of play with it and see uh which side you like um, Karen, good to be here. I missed last week. Don't worry. It's okay. Um, I posted it if you want to watch it, but, um, we're just happy to have you here when you can make it. Okay. Now I'm going to do the, um, the middle, the mid ground tree. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use 177 and ink just the branches here. Just the branches right there okay and then i'm going to go down on the trunk with number 969 and just color that on no problem jane absolutely great questions this is why i'm here is to help you feel more confident in your watercoloring abilities okay so i'm going to Stamp this one just a little bit further back just to signify that it is more in that middle ground area. And before I do anything with the leaves, I'm gonna take my brush and um, Julie, I make it look easy because it is. There is a bit of a um, learning curve when you first start, but that's with any new craft. And um, it really becomes so fun and so easy when you learn the tools. Hi, Trisha, good to see you. You guys, you need to check out Trisha's watercolors. Oh, gorgeous. She's on our design team, she's amazing. Love, love, love what you do, Trisha. So, so creative. Um, but Julie, it really is. The more you practice, the more you will feel confident and it will feel easy. Um, it's a, uh, it's something that, you know, the more you spend time with it, it becomes, uh, it becomes sort of second nature almost to just let yourself kind of put the colors where you want to and, um, you know, the leaves where you want to and the flowers where you want to. And then you kind of get to the point where you're like, well, that's just where they grew and it's really pretty the way it is. Um, so once you get those tools, uh, you'll feel like, you'll feel like that. And maybe you already do, um, in which case that would be wonderful. So, um, she says, I do love it. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Um, hi, Kendra. Darn, I put resin on some cutting boards and left my craft room <laughs> because the resin is too strong. Even with the, oh no. Oh, oh, Victoria. It's okay. You can follow along anytime. Of course, I will post this, um, if you wanted to look back at it later. 
Uh, oh, Trisha, you are so sweet. Wow, that's a big, that's a big compliment because the stuff you come up with is so innovative and fun. It's beautiful. You are the inspiration girl. Okay, so I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to take a little bit of water and I'm going to start pulling out the color in these branches. Now, this is what is going to give me my background and the exterior shape of my tree okay so i'm just dabbing and i'm going to let me just zoom in a little bit more i feel like we're still just a little bit far away i think you could benefit from just seeing a little bit closer okay so i'm just going to dab and just bring out the color here now the further back you go the wider it's going to feel and the less tall um, it's going to feel just wide so you're going to start kind of bringing that, those leaves out a little bit. Okay. Any questions? Yes, Tony, I agree. <laughs> she has gorgeous paintings. Yes, yes, she does. Okay. I'm wondering if I missed anyone here. Okay. If you have questions, just throw them into the chat. If you are brand new or you've never commented before, feel free to just say a hello in the comment box. If you're nervous, this group is absolutely the most welcoming, wonderful, kind um, group. And there's no dumb questions because um, we have all been beginners at one time. So um, if you ask a question and I don't end up seeing it, there's about 50 wonderful, amazing crafters on right now that would be happy to answer your questions. Um, I do my best to kind of see them when they come through, but I, I don't always catch them. So um, feel free, feel free to say hi. I would love to welcome you. Okay, so I've got sort of the background here. Oh my goodness, um, Darylin, hello, first time watching, welcome, thanks Deanna, thanks for welcoming um, Darylin, I'm so happy you're here, welcome, welcome, all right, feel free to ask questions in the comment section, I will do my best to get to you, okay, so now I'm going to take this leaf, and this is the one from the large tree set, okay, that's this one, and I'm gonna use this one to kind of fill in the areas here. Now, really important note, when you're doing the trees that have the fill in from behind, you do not wanna stamp on this until it is totally dry. If you feel it and it feels even a little bit sticky or a little bit wet, you are going to have a big mess because the ink is just gonna run like crazy and then it's really hard to come back from that, okay? So you wanna make sure that's really dry. It's an easy step to do. Um, make sure it's dry before you go in. Now I'm going to take my 249, okay? And, oh yay! <laughs> oh my goodness, wonderful! <laughs> Gold star for me for pronouncing Daryl Lynn's name correctly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So sweet. Okay. I'm going to ink my little uh, tree leaves and I'm going to start just stamping these in. And I'm going to go a little bit wider as I move down. Okay. I don't want this to be super perfect. I don't want it to be super symmetrical. I do want it to have a nice shape, but it doesn't need to be perfect because that's just the way the leaves grew on this one. All right. So as I come here, I'm going to bring a little bit out. And you can see I filled in quite a bit more than I did on this one. Okay, this is the one that if we don't have this set, we use the one from the foliage. Yes, Tina. So if you don't have the large tree um, foliage, this is a great substitute. If you have this, just ink only this part. And that would be perfect, okay? 
So if you don't have the large tree leaves, um, it is a newer set. So if you don't have that, then just use this one and only ink a little bit of the side and you'll get a very similar result, okay? Now, I am going to take my brush. Did you use 177 on the branches and 249 on the leaves? Mary, you got it. That's exactly what I did. So I used um, 177 on the branches and then I used 249, 249 green um, on the leaves that I stamped in so that I could have a little bit different variation of green. Okay. Um, your middle ground tree is so bushy. I love it. Yes. <laughs> I love bushy trees. <laughs> There's also a similar leaf uh, filler in the mini foliage set. Okay, Diane, great to know. Um, oh yeah, I think that is, that is true. I, um, I often forget about the mini foliage set. So, uh, definitely that would be a great option too. you know, get creative. You don't, you're, the likelihood of you having every single thing that we use in the videos is probably low. So be creative and I, and I will help you find substitutions if you need help. So if you're like, I don't have that one, what else can I use? I'm more than happy to give you some ideas. Okay. All right. So I'm going to come in here with my brush and I'm going to just dab around where I put those new leaves in. And you can see there's not as much detail in this one as there is in this one, okay? I did not pause. Am I back? Am I good? What do you guys think? Somebody else lost me. So I will put this video on um, YouTube and I'll also put it on the Facebook page. So if for some reason it cut out, I have the original video so there won't be anything lost in this one. Um. Oh, no, I think, I think I just lost everybody. Gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. Can everybody see me? I have not moved on. I think I'm back. I think I'm back. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm back on. Am I back? Okay, sorry everybody, I'm not sure what the problem is. Um, I can try doing, uh, signing on to, okay, someone's saying I'm good, we're back now. Okay, it looks like we're good, I have not moved on. So um, hopefully, hopefully um, we are good now. Sorry, everyone. I'm not sure why that keeps happening. Um, technology, I guess. Okay. Okay, everybody's back. Yay! Okay, well, let me know if I, um, if I uh, sort of cut out again so that I can try to... Free to know, Keely. Okay, give me hearts if I'm back on because some people are saying I'm back on and some people are saying that I'm not. Uh, let's see, okay. All right, so I'm gonna keep going. I'm hoping that everybody is back on. Okay, I'm getting lots of hearts now. Thanks everyone, I'm so sorry about that. I'm not sure um, why that happened but I will post this onto um, the Facebook page and the YouTube channel so that you can uh, come and see the video. Let's see, somebody's saying I'm still blurry. Let's try this. Okay, now I'm back on. Weird. Okay. Okay, thank you everyone. Thanks, Anne. <laughs> Thank you for the stars. I'm so sorry. Um, hopefully when we uh, upload the one on YouTube, we can kind of crop out that section <laughs> because, um, yikes. All right, everybody, I'm going to keep on going here. Hopefully we can get through this without any more interruptions. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Felda. All right. 
Um, okay, Marianne, good to know. All right, everyone. So I'm going to keep going if that's okay. Okay, so, um, let's see. Is it live or is it Memorex? Memor Memorex. Tina, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> I would love, I would love for you to enlighten me though, because I'm sure it's just me. Um, oh, we love AI. Oh, thank you, Velda. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I want to give everyone just a chance to hop back on if you're, um, if you are sort of were kicked off and then you want to follow me, um, you want to finish. So yes, yes, yes. Okay. Are we good? We can't lose you, <laughs> Tina. Oh, I love you, girl. Okay, gave me a chance to get a good screenshot. LOL, Melody. <laughs> good. Thank you. Thank you for just, you know, focusing on the silver lining. <laughs> Joel will be extra busy. Yes, he will. <laughs> Karen. Okay. All right. Thank you, Paula. Thank you. I'm too young, lol. Well, I mean, I'm pushing for you guys. <laughs> I am in my upper, mid-30s. Mid-upper 30s. Oh, yeah, I should probably know that. Kendra, it's a commercial from before your time. Okay, well, I'm going to have to look into that. Um, <laughs> Tina, I'll look into it. <laughs> we don't want you to be fired, Ruthann. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to talk to the bosses about this. Okay, so I'm going to keep going if everybody is ready for me to give this another try. <laughs> Velda. Hi, Cindy. I'm back. Yes, thank you. Hi, Lisa. Okay, so I am going to keep going and just bring this out a little bit just so I have a really nice um, haze kind of in the background and that's gonna make this tree look really lush and big and mature. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the trunk out just a little bit. When you hit 59, let me know. When I hit 59 minutes, <laughs> what do you mean, Kathy? <laughs> You'll laugh your butt off when you see it. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm excited to watch it now. <laughs> oh, when you hit 59, years let you know. <laughs> I will do. I'm sure we'll still be friends. <laughs> okay, a third time's a charm. Amen. Okay, so I am going to... Lorna, ready to rock and roll. Yes, I like it. All right, I'm going to bring number 177 in here, and once again, we'll give us a little bit of a background... Okay, and we'll just put this on a slope as well. And you, you know, you don't have to do this. Um, it's really up to you if you want to. And you can even put in an extra little background back here if you want. And if you want it to, to kind of look different, you can mix your colors. And you can put it a little bit darker back there if you want. It's up to you. Um, Kendra put, is it live or is it Memorex on YouTube? And you'll see the commercial. Okay, Pat, I will do that. <laughs> I'm excited to see this. You all know what it is. I need to get with it. Get with the times, sounds like. Okay. Yay, Pam. Thank you. Thank you for looking. It was my fault. <laughs> it was totally my fault. I'm sure I did something wrong and lost connection. Um, I'm hoping it was just a, a Wi-Fi issue, but you know, you just never know. <laughs> okay. So sad to be late. You know what, Pam, don't worry about it because I've had all kinds of technical issues. So, um, hopefully we will have none of those in the remaining time that we're together. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take 565. And I'm going to focus the sky underneath this tree because this is a big tree. I want it to kind of be set up tall, okay? Because when you're looking at a big tree, um, it really goes up into the sky, right? And if we put the sky up here like we did for this one, it's going to dwarf it. It's going to make it look younger. And we really want it to look like a nice mature tree, 
So we want to keep our sky right at the trunk. All right, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Get with the old times. Yes, I need to. It's our boomer humor. <laughs> I want to be a boomer. I actually do. You guys who are in the boomers are my people. This You are who I want to hang out with. So I wish I were a boomer. Okay. So. All right. Okay. So now I am going to move on to... Um, <laughs> Ruthann, don't ever paint sky under me. I don't want to look mature. <laughs> How hilarious. Lisa, yes, it can add to um, pushing the tree back further. Yes, absolutely. Because if the tree's really close to you, you're going to see sky up here, right? And especially if it's a small tree, a, a, a sapling. I think I said a seedling, but it's a sapling. Um and it's going to be really small, but the trees that are set further back, you're going to have the sky just mostly underneath here because they're going to be really big trees. Um, Karen's a Gen Xer. Technically, I'm a millennial. Isn't that weird? That feels weird to me. I'm at the top end of the millennials. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I don't, I feel like I should be a Gen Xer is what I feel like I should be. Okay, so we are going to keep going back, okay? Now we're going to take our tree and I'm going to stamp off this tree, just like that. And I'm just gonna get most of the uh, ink off of this because when I make a tree that's sitting really deep, really far back like this one, it's going to be shorter. It's not going to be as tall. It's going to be shorter and wider. So you're going to get more of a circle shape out of this. So I need to take off that top part of the tree. This part is going to be um, not colored in, okay? Paula says, this is the best class ever. I'm learning so much. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so glad. This is why I wanted to make it into a three-part series, three or four-part series, um, because I, I want you to get as much out of it as you can, and I don't want to rush. This is a basics, um, you know, live every week, and I want to keep it basic. I want to be able to explain to you in detail what I'm doing. Um, so that makes me really happy. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna take off just this top part and I'm also gonna take off some of the trunk. So you can use a little wipe if you want to. I usually use my fingers, but you know, most of you use wipes. So I'll just kind of do as you do. <laughs> and I'll just take off that top part. I may still get a little bit and that's totally fine. Tina, this is the tree from the Covered Bridge set. The covered bridge set. Okay, so I'm going to use, I'm using this one right now, but I'm also going to show you how to do this one. And just for reference, if you stick around, um, we're going to do this tutorial afterwards. Okay. Um, three parts are ready today, <laughs> Karen. <laughs> Karen, you absolutely kill me. You are hilarious. She's, she said, well, that's why I'm doing a three to four part. She says, well, you already have three parts today. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's too good. Ah, thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> 969. <laughs> I know it is. It is Karen. I also do it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to ink just the bottom of this trunk. Okay. Just the bottom of the trunk and make sure it's nice and straight across there. And then <laughs> it's true. I know Janet. I mean, I can't Deny that that's true, <laughs> Karen. 
Okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm using 177 again for those of you following along. Okay, so I'm going to stamp this down now even further back. Okay, so I'm gonna have something more along these lines. Um, that's so pretty. What are you gonna, what are you going to show us later? There may be a new stamp set in my future, Lisa. <laughs> I'm gonna show you this one, the birch trees, which I absolutely adore. I love the birch trees. So I'm gonna show you those too. This might be a longer, a longer live, shocking. Okay. All right. So hi, Carla, welcome. Carla is the one who started the Art Impression Stamp Group. If you guys are not members of the stamp group, head over there, she'll have to approve you because it's her group, not ours. Um, she will have to approve you. And it's it's very easy if you're a crafter and you're a all around kind person and a most of all AI fan, uh, the likelihood of you getting in is great. Okay, so, and you know, in that group, there is a ton of just wonderful encouragement from so many people. So head over there if you are not a group member. Okay, so I'm just going to take my brush and I am just dabbing. This one is so far in the background that you are not going to see leaves specifically. So you're going to make this really, really um, washed out and not detailed because <laughs> it's in the way background. You're not going to see any, any, any leaves. Um, it's a great, fun, encouraging group. Yes, it is, Carla. It's the kindest group I've ever been involved with. <laughs> and just everyone has something warm and kind and wonderful to say. Um, yes, Roberta, agree. Okay, so I'm just adding in my green here. All right, and you can see it's already looking further set back, right? Let's see, and I'm gonna take now 249 on my palette with the 177. So this is gonna be 249. And that's, this is the cooler green, which I love to pair with the olive green. Okay, so I'm gonna take 249 and I'm just going to begin to dab this in here. Mostly into the center, a little bit out to the exterior, but it's going to be mostly in the center because that's where the bulk of the uh, leaves are. As you come out, it's gonna lighten up. Okay, so that'll kind of be the outside. So I'm just going to bring in a little bit more. It's okay to have some variation in green in here. I would encourage you to do that because it's just gonna look more realistic. But you don't wanna put leaves on this tree far in the back because you won't, you would not see them. Okay. And I'm going to just add a little bit of thickness to this trunk because it's a larger tree. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more thickness here because it's mature. Um, I couldn't take it. I broke into my craft room and craft all my AS stuff so I could learn how to better do these trees. <laughs> Victoria, that's wonderful. <laughs> I would be the same. I would be busting in there too. Just, you know, put your N95 on and jam in there, get your stuff and jam out. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take a little bit more of the background and I'll mix a little bit of that 177 with the 565. This just gives a really nice like background green. Okay. So I'm going to just kind of use that and I'll just blend this out. I want it to be really loose back here. 
And then right next to the tree, I can pull out some of this color. But it's not going to be detailed. I added thickness as I matured. Same, Pam. Same. <laughs> Hi, Teresa. Thanks, Kendra. Just arrived, but I'll watch from the beginning as soon as I can. I truly need help with trees. Teresa, if you're just joining, um, this video is probably going to be posted tomorrow because I've had so many technical issues that um, it is not going to be a full video if I post it tonight. So look for it on YouTube tomorrow and um, you will have the HD experience. We'll try to post it on Facebook as well, but it won't be available tonight. Okay, so it'll be on first thing tomorrow uh, so that we can sort of remedy all the technical issues. <laughs> okay, I am still going to put a little bit of sky in here, just a touch, just a touch, a small amount in the background. But I'm not going to do it over because this is a huge tree. This is a huge tree set in the background. Okay, do we see the difference as we move to the background. You can really tell, and actually I didn't put a, I didn't put a, give this one a little home. So we'll put in something here. And I'm just taking my brush and um, coloring in a little shadow here. And then I'll take maybe my, my grass and just ink the very tip of that with the 177, just the tip. I'm not gonna ink the whole grass and give this just a tiny, teeny bit of, of detailing there. All right. And I'll take my brush and just put a little bit of detailing there. Okay. I love the group. I had the worst experience today with a card I posted on what I thought was it. What? What happened? Oh my goodness. Wait to play, but at least I know I'm going to love it. Oh, Lisa, you will love it. If you have any problems like that, you know, I've never experienced that, but if you have problems like that, contact Ruth Ann, who's a moderator, or Carla. And I would go for Ruth Ann because Carla's got a lot on her plate and, and so does Ruth Ann, but Ruth Ann moderates. So um, it's not our group, so I, I can't um, deal with rude people. But if you have a problem like that, definitely, definitely um, uh, reach out to Ruth Ann. Maybe that wasn't in our group, though. Maybe that wasn't in the AI group. Um, but if it was then I would reach out to someone for sure. Cause that's not, from my understanding, that is not the, the kind of environment that they're wanting. So I'm so sorry. Um, now what makes the tree seem even further away than the other? Lisa, so it's gonna be your branches or your leaves. So we used a bigger leaf here because that's closer. And then we used a mid-sized leaf and then no leaf. And that's what's giving you the impression that the tree is further away because it's the same tree. We use the exact same tree. It's just the different leaves. Dinner's waiting for me on the table. Going to catch you. Okay, Diane. Great to see you. Thanks for coming in. Big hugs. Enjoy your dinner. And we'll catch you next time. Okay. All right. So... Now we are going to, if I don't have any questions about the trees here, we're going to move on to the birch trees. Anybody, anyone have questions um, on how to do any of this? Okay, I don't see any questions. Lisa, great. This has been so helpful. Oh, fantastic, Cindy. Sometimes it's just these little lessons that make a big difference. So um, that makes me happy. Um, good, Teresa. That's good that your brush stays pointy. <laughs> you know, if you want it more flat, you can just squeeze off just that end, kind of push, push the, um, push the bristles apart with your fingers and squeeze off that end. And that will give you a more flattened brush. All right. So I am going to switch over to the birch trees now. 
if there aren't more questions. And Diane sent 100 stars. Thank you, Diane. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Appreciate that. Um, Ruthann says this will be made into a slimline card. Yay! Fantastic. Okay, so here is the birch trees, and I'll zoom back in so you can see this. This is actually a very simple project, and um, but it has a big bang for its buck because you've got all these trees in here, and um, you could just do a card with just these. So basically three stamps, your leaves, your grass, and your birch trees. AI stamp group, never be hurtful. I left the big nasty group, no bullies for me, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Only kindness. Okay, so I am going to start the birch trees now. And we are going to grab the birch trees, these ones. Okay. Do we have the birch trees for those following along? And I'm going to use my gray. So to get the gray, I'm going to use blue and I'm going to use brown. So I'm going to start with the 565. Look like puff balls. That's okay, Teresa. You're probably getting a really great background tree. <laughs> so just practice. You know, using the different leaves, you'll start to recognize um, in what area your tree is in by what leaves you use. So then you'll say, oh, I want a background tree. Well, I'm not going to use leaves because it's so far back. I'm not going to see it. If you want a really close tree, then you're going to use something like this so that you really see the detail in those leaves. Okay, 565, we've got people ready. Awesome. So I'm going to do 565 first and get that colored in. Notice I did not color the top. I'm going to color the top with green. So this is 969. This is my second color for the gray. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to use the back of this just to stamp off because I don't have any more paper with me, but I'm going to stamp off one time and then I'm going to ink my green after I stamp off. It, you can do the green before or after, it doesn't really matter, but I like a really nice lush green. So I'm going to stamp just like that. And I will take my brush and take my water and just start dabbing. Remember how we did with that middle ground tree? We just kind of brought out the color. That's what I'm gonna do here. We brought out the color just ever so slightly so that it has a nice, um, Rosita, the stamp number is no worries, I'm happy to show you. It's 4808 Covered Bridge Mini Set, and the first tree we used is also in that. So that's the first one, and then this is the birch trees, okay? No problem. Okay, I'm gonna take my brush and just kinda keep building this green just a little bit. You don't wanna overdo this part because you do still want some white space in here. I do still want some white space. Always white space. Okay, so I'm gonna take my brush and just go in between here. All right, now here's the biggest lesson. I don't have these trees. Could someone give me the stamp set number, please? Geraldine, this one is 4808 covered bridge mini set and it's going to have both trees I'm using today okay yes Barbara it is it's one that we use during the expo classes Dorothy um the green is 177 Tombow okay so now I'm going to take in between the trees, now what makes the birch trees really stand out is that they're white. 
and we want the white to push forward, okay? Now we're gonna take on the palette, we're gonna take number 177, and I'm gonna mix this just a little bit of the 565, and I'm going to put this right into the background like a little hill, like we did on the last ones, like this. So these little hills in the background, I'm gonna do another one of those here. And that's just gonna help set our birch trees forward. And we will angle this, make sure you're getting, oops, I got on the actual tree, that's okay. It's really hard to see um, <laughs> on some of these because they're uh, sort of stacked next to each other. It's hard to see if you're coloring the tree or in between the tree. <laughs> so you wanna color in between the tree. And if you color the trees, no big deal. It's totally fine. So I'll take a little bit of the green. Now keep in mind, you don't wanna go below the line where the tree is because this is a background hill. And we'll just bring some of this color in. All right. And you don't have to grab the same color every time when you're doing this. You can grab different um, bits of blue and green, however you want to, because there's going to be shadows in the background and it's gonna cast a different color in between the trees. So it's fine, just play with it. Okay, now in the center of the trees that's really gonna push out the birches is putting blue in the center for your sky. So we're gonna put the 565 right in the center here and it's okay to pull out a little bit of that brown if you hit it, it's not a big deal. But this is really what's going to set forward your birches. Is if you put this blue in there. You see how they kind of come forward, that white part comes forward. And I'm gonna go in between these as well. And if you get a little brown, it's okay, don't worry. You know, we're in, we're in a watercolor world <laughs> when we're painting and not everything is gonna be perfect and it doesn't have to be. Some paintings you look at and you're like, what in the world? But that's just the way that that painting came out for that artist and maybe they intended to, maybe they didn't, but we'll never know. And it's gonna be the same on here. Did you mean to do that or not? We'll never know. <laughs> and just go with it, just own your work. And if brown comes out, it's fine. Like, look at mine, but the brown's coming out and I am completely okay with that. And I'm gonna put a little bit more blue here. And then of course on both sides of the trees. Let me zoom in a little bit. Don't worry, be happy. Yes, Pam, that is right. Don't worry, be happy. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just going to pull out some of this blue. You guys are doing great. I can't see what you're making, but the fact that you're watching and learning and trying, you're doing great. You know, the, the first place to begin a new project or, um, you know, a, a grow in, in the art that you're doing is to practice and play and take chances. And you know, it's okay if you mess up, it's just paper. So, and there's a backside, which is even better. <laughs> so I'm really building up this blue in here and I'm doing that because I really wanna push that, that white forward on the birches. And you can see the darker that I make this blue, the more that white comes out. Do you see that? 
Okay. No blue above the sky or the above the trees. That's correct, Vicky. We're keeping the blue in between because these are big trees. So we don't want to go above because it will dwarf them. Okay, so we want to keep the big, big trees big. All right. Now we're going to put in our large leaf. So this is the same leaf as that middle ground tree. So we're doing very similar to the middle ground. These birch trees are really big. And the middle ground can, oops, I'm not even on camera here. The middle ground is really large. So you can have a really small middle ground tree. Um, and, if, and if this is set, you know setting way, way back and you can still see details, well, that thing is absolutely huge. <laughs> so um, for these ones, they're maybe not as big as this one, but they're still pretty big. Okay, so I am going to take number 249, if I can find where I put it, 249. Um, it's okay, Rosita, don't worry. It's, you know, when you first start, you're going to be a little bit slower because you're still learning um, the technique, and that's normal. You should take your time. It's totally fine. Now, people um, who have been stamping for a little bit, and this is what I used to teach in my classes as well, is when you have a, a good grasp on the basics and um, you feel like, okay, I think I can do like, you know, the flowers and the foliage comfortably. You know, I know how to stamp several times. I know how to leave white space and I know how to leave um, shadows and things. Then I would encourage you to just try a little bit faster because if you're going faster, you're not focused on being perfect. And uh, it always looks better when you're not being perfect. It always looks better when things are sort of unintentionally placed because it looks more natural. Okay, so you can see I'm just re-inking this and stamping wherever I want because that's just where they grew. Are you saying the birch trees are a good mid-ground? Yes, Becky. So if I use this leaf, that tree is going to be mid-ground. If I don't use any leaf and I set it way, way back, that's going to be a way background tree. Way, way back. I mean, you could maybe use dots for those because they're going to be really tiny. Um, but any tree with this leaf is going to be a middle ground. Okay, unless you make this a bush or something. You can have a foreground um, bush with this. But... Um, if you're using it on a tree, you're going to make it a middle ground tree. If you used this on a tree, it's going to be a foreground tree. It's going to be a sapling. It's going to be small, young. All right. Unless you do like a giant overhang um, tree, then it would be a mature tree, but you'd be close enough to see the details of the leaves. So you'd still use this. Tina, don't be sorry. That's totally fine. This leaf is in the large watercolor tree set. That's going to be this one. And if you don't have that one, you can use this one on the foliage set one. This is a great substitution. Okay, so I've got my leaves in. I know it really brings it to life, doesn't it? Now I've got my leaves in and I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to start dabbing. Now remember, we want to leave white space. We wanna leave white space and we wanna let our tree breathe a little bit. If you fill it in entirely, it's gonna feel really flat. And trees are like the furthest thing from flat. They've got these big giant um, branches and leaves and they're just, they're amazing, they're majestic. <laughs> And so you don't want to flatten them out. All right. I'm just dabbing along here. You can see that lighter green, um, that olive green kind of coming through the back. And if I zoom in here, you can see a little bit closer even. And I'm just dabbing all along here. Still leaving white space because that's important. Give it room to breathe. You can bring out some of the color down in here. Birch trees are fun. Yes, they are. <laughs> this is a really fun set. I love these trees. Um, these are the first trees that I uh, 
that I would grab when I was teaching anything about trees, the, the birch trees and the, um, this tree. And they both come in the same set. So I would always grab for that really nice um, covered bridge set because they had the trees. Okay. Um, Jalinda, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope that you can craft with me if you're not right now, even if you're doing something else. I just, I so encourage just being creative. You know, I want this to be like a group hangout and, and just, um, a fun time for all of us to just get together, you know, on, on FaceTime live or Facebook live and just hang out. But thank you so much. You're so sweet. All right. I'm going to take a little bit more of that green and I'm just going to bring in, now that that's dry, a little bit more of that. And that will just push forward those birch trees even more. And notice I'm not ending the line. I'm not ending the line harsh. I'm ending it very, very lightly in a point because that that creates a uh, dimension in your work and that tells the viewer that there's more here. It's just that our focus is right here. A lot of times people will end, um, end their trees with a really, really harsh line. And how can I show you this? I guess on the back I had this stamp off. Yeah. So when you end with a really harsh line, it just, it doesn't look... It doesn't look like you're looking into sort of a scene. Um, it looks like it was just sort of cut off and it, it looks artificial then almost if you cut it off really harsh like that. Um, if you have a really nice point here and you bring that out, see the difference? It leads your eye back to the image and here it's like, oh wow, that's harsh. So if you pull that out, it's going to be much better um, received by your viewer. Oh, good. Awesome, Rosita. I'd love to hear that. Janet, Friday's payday. We'll be adding some trees. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I'm upside down. Hello. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to zoom out just a touch here. Oh, I'm glad. I'm so glad. Yeah, this is why I wanted to do it in, you know, more spread out videos because I just, I feel like having a good grasp on trees is really important to the, the technique. All right, I'm going to take number, let's do for the grass down here, let's do 249. I'm going to do 249, my grass. And I'm just going to ink this in a line. and have that come down at an angle. And notice I'm stamping off, but I'm connecting the grasses so they don't look like standalone grasses. Okay, and I'm just gonna pull some of that out. And then again, I'm gonna end with that point. End with that point. If you end with a point, you're telling the person there's more to this story, but I want you to just look right here. Okay, I know, Becky. Isn't that crazy? If you keep your sky under here, it makes your tree feel really big. The other thing about skies over big trees is you never know where to stop. If you have really big, giant trees, it's really hard to think, okay, do I go all the way up here? Do I stay down here? And then it almost looks like an umbrella or a hat because the tree is so big. The sky really does need to be kind of kept down in here. Yes, it does. It gives some shadow under the trees. Yep, it sure does. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and give you some 
instruction on the birches themselves. I'm getting lots of hearts. Yay, you guys. Thank you. Awesome. I'm learning so much. Victoria, great. Yay, thank you for hanging out with me tonight. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. Even white things have shadows, okay? So you can't just leave your birches naked, essentially. You've got to add the shadows in here, okay? So I'm just going to pick a side. You can pick the right side or the left side, but pick a side, and you're going to just put a little bit of a shadow on just that side. Just that side. And I'm going to come down just the left-hand side on these. Okay. And I'm going to keep coming down a little bit more. Now, if you have to grab color from your palette, you totally can. Teresa, this was very helpful. I've had a hard time with my trees. It's common. It's really, really common to have a hard time with trees. And, you know, admittedly, we don't spend that much time teaching about trees. We're like, oh, yeah, stamping the leaves. And, um, you know, for a lot of people, they've had instructions. But for a lot of newer people, I felt like this was a really important lesson to be able to get out to you. And as, a, as kind of a review for people who have been stamping a long time, it's easy to forget some of these things. So, um, do you do anything with the horizontal lines? Which, um, yes, we'll get there. Yes, Jerry. Yep, you sure do. And we will get there. So I'm going to use, um, number 969. And I'm just going to put a little bit, I'm not going to do a lot, but I want the, the birches to have just a little bit more of a shadow here. So I'm going to take just a tiny bit of that 969 in the areas that I feel like really need just a little bit more shadow, you can also take the 565 and you can mix it with the 969 and that's gonna give you that nice gray. So it's really up to you if you want a grayer um, shadow or the 969 brown, okay? So I'll use a little bit of both so you can see kind of the difference. But do you see how that shadow pushes out the white? It pushes out the white. I'm, I'm zoomed in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so can you guys see me zoomed in? Do I need to zoom in more? I'm getting a, a prompt to um, zoom in a little bit. What do you guys think? Is that good? Okay, so I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to pull that down. Do you see how the white jumps? This is a great video. I'm a newbie and learning so much. Kendra, you're such a fa fantastic teacher. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so I'm getting a request. Thank you to zoom in a little bit more. <laughs> I'm like, I think I'm zoomed in, but I was not zoomed in far enough. Okay, um, if you mixed in a little green with the brown, the trunks could look like aspen trees. Yes, they could, they sure could. A lot of the trees can be used um, in different ways. So don't, don't fear about kind of trying new things. You know, you're just adding more tools to your tool belt. All right, I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna bring that shadow just on the left. I'm just choosing one side, one side of the tree to add my shadow. And you can see that white is just popping forward like crazy now. And even though we added the shadows, it still looks like birch trees, right? Nothing that's white is perfectly white. It still has shadows on it. So you've got to add those shadows. Would doing gray look too washed out? No, this is gray. So this is brown on the left, and then the center is the gray. Okay. Hubby just saw and said, wow. <laughs> I 
Janet. Tell him thank you. <laughs> Unless he said wow to yours, in which case, bravo. Fantastic. Proud of you. <laughs> okay. Geraldine thought you were fine, but zooming in closer is better. Good to know. Let me know if I need to zoom in, you guys, because it's really hard for me to um, know <laughs> what you need to see. So, And I'm more than happy to do so, okay? So I'm going to take my brush, and on these little um, horizontal lines, I'm just going to go over those very, very lightly with my brush. And then I'm going to actually come back in with my twin tone, the brown, on the tiny tip, this one, this teeny tip. And I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to add these little details in and darken some of the areas on these birches. Okay. And you can see even though we're adding color, they look even more white than they did before. All right. Diana sent 150 stars. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, that makes me so happy. Stars are like a new thing with Facebook. And um, so it's really fun to get them. Thank you, guys. That makes a huge difference. I know, doesn't it? And now the birches look super, super white. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to zoom out. And I am going to sign this work. And I was going to use the blue twin tone, but I will use... Oh, here's the blue. Okay. I'm going to use the blue twin tone to sign because I just, I like using the blue for my signature. So I'm going to sign and date. Okay. Tina, you're welcome. You are so welcome. My pleasure. Okay. How do we send stars? I don't know. I think there's a little stars button next to the comments is my guess. It's, I think it's a new feature, so I am not totally familiar um, so I am going to, once you guys get another good look at this, I'm going to switch back over. Okay. So here's that one. And then the one that we did earlier with the foreground, middle ground background. Okay. And I'm going to switch back. Okay. Hi everyone. Okay. So did we like that? Did we learn something? Um, how do we feel about my three part, three to four part series? As Karen said, I've did, done three of the parts today, which I actually haven't, but it was hilarious. Um, <laughs> if this was not enough for you, check out YouTube. We've got tons of videos. This video as a whole, so before I got cut off, and then the second part will be knit together and posted onto YouTube as a whole video. So um, make sure you check that out. It will be uploaded tomorrow morning. So we will not upload this video onto the Facebook page tonight. It will be uploaded in the morning, okay? Um, and that's just because of the technical issues. And um, But normally we would upload it right away, okay? If you wanna see this right away in the morning, check it out on YouTube. It's a better image. You're gonna get that HD image, okay? Um, if that's still not enough, check us out on, um, Facebook. We always post, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. We would love to have you. Same thing on Instagram. Come on Instagram, see all the posts we do, invite your friends, share the art, and we can grow our group. So, um, and that's really what it's all about is getting together and enjoying our craft together, encouraging one another, hanging out, spending time together, affirming each other. And um, that's really the heart of what we're doing here. And for a lot of us, our outlet is art, it's creativity, it's being together, it's building those interpersonal relationships with each other that are gonna be long lasting. And um, that's what I hope for Back to Basics on top of, of course, um, the basics, art impressions, watercolor tools, tips and tricks that I can give you every week, okay? Um, 
check out Bonnie Krebs Bible Journaling on Instagram if you're into the um, Bible journaling. And also, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., she is going to be on live, so Facebook Live, 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, and she's going to bring you more of those really, really, really cute two by two inch watercolor um, beautiful scenes, okay? So you're going to learn more tips and tricks than you did last time. It's absolutely worth it to tune in. Give her lots of love, lots of hearts like you guys do for me. And um, I just appreciate you. I love you all so much. I am on every Tuesday, 5 o'clock p.m. PST. Check out Claire on Fridays for TGIF with Claire. And she's always got really fun things, encouraging words, lots of cards to show you and products, okay? So I will see you next time. Mwah! Lots of love and hugs to you all. And next week, just so I don't forget, we will be doing the palm trees and the fir trees. So part two, don't miss it, palm trees and fir trees. And then I'll also do these fir trees as well, okay? So I'll see you next week. I love you all. Bye.